battle. It's lights out and we are racing in Catalonia. It's another superb launch from number one Packer Bang. No, oh, Banyaya. Banyaya's gone down and Banyaya's been clipped. There's going to be a, be a red, red flag. flag. There has to be a red flag. Be this flag. Red so Becky's down as well. There was definitely a Prem out bike there, which clearly Zarco, because you can see Jorge Martin there. So in that incident, or the combined incidents... Yeah, I, I think he had a, a, a leg run over. Yeah. Marco Bem and the gravel at, at turn two. I may well be wrong. There's so much to try and keep an eye on there. These are the riders that escaped Marco, and then it's just Skittles. Down go Betsecki, down goes Alex Marquez and Fabio De Antonio. Fun. Bastianini loses it and goes straight into the side of them and you can see there's no KTM in the middle of all of that so as you say Binder's After that one yeah, he's certainly conscious as you can see on the bottom of your that screens was, that was the there's through the on Jack Miller and then he's just gonna clip his knee into Joan Zarco there you go yeah, it look how close. So again gets clouted in the first corner just as he was in the sprint and then it's just temping bowling it's just comes an air bastion his rear tire is gonna get in the air there he goes then out of control was now bastion he's gonna get a penalty for that absolutely yeah. no question and yeah. that is Pekka Banyaya, who was running away, wasn't he? In what looked like... As the ambulance then makes its way back to the medical centre, of course. As soon as we have any... Other ...by the way, is that Anea Bastianini, just to your point there, is also on his way to the medical centre. He's going via the scooter. Everything that hits the ground, hopefully not head too hard. But the, the only thing I'd say is... Um, the, the, full, the impact, um, yes, you can make some fractures and stuff on your body and soft tissue damage, but others that are trying to turn themselves around and focus on the race again when when someone gets hit upper body. In Barcelona, it's lights out and we are racing. Jorge Martin again powers away on that prima prima Ducati. Time was actually Jack Miller. He's the leading KTM on the 43 from what was effectively 11th on the grid. He's in fifth, just ahead of his teammate. Kez ninth at the moment. Fabio Quattararo, he's got away really well. He's into the top 10 already. So Maverick Vignal really close. He was almost front tyre on Jorge Martin's rear tyre there, down into the heartbreaking zone for turn. Into his rhythm. He won't want Maverick Vignal his teammate to get too far up the road. Vignal, I think, will be pretty happy at the moment to have a Pramac Ducati immediately behind him. He was leaving it so late on the brakes into turn one that he nearly tacked the rear tyre of Alex Marquez's Ducati. Zarka, who had a shocking start in the sleigh. Of course, two factory Ducatis, not in this Grand Prix. Maverick Vignal is then leading Jorge Martin, Alasia Spargo and Miguel Oliveira. The this weekend, so Maybe his hand was forced by having to go on to the, the spare bike. He's got through, though, on his teammate, Jack Miller. So, Brad... Let's quickly go down to uh, Simon Cray from the spot, as always, to uh, explain exactly what's going on with Brad Binder. Yeah, thanks for that, Simon. Confirmation of what we did suspect, because there's been very few laps cut on that hard front tyre here. And number 10, and he has got through. That was brilliantly done there by Alexis Spargro, setting about hunting down his... ...with his very good friend, Jorge Martini, we're now looking back at. And the important thing here for Spargro is to try and hold that Ducati off. Three, Alexis Spargro, 140.3 for him as well. They were both four tenths of a second faster than Jorge Martini. Now here comes Miguel Oliveira. Are we potentially looking at history here in Catalonia? in what would be the first ever podium lockout. Yeah, now that's been a nightmare it day, hasn't it, for Brad Bindi? Yeah, he doesn't look like he's been down the floor. It's not for, unfortunately, for the South African. Back at the front, Vinales and the latest Fargo, comfortably in those mid-thing for Aprilia, whether it be the 23 spec or last year's 22 spec in the more than capable hands of Miguel Oliveira. Not a good lap. They have Another former MotoGP world champion, Mark Marquez. Already you can see, can't you, some of the, the bikes squirming on the little issue. I'd be curious to know what's going on with Betzecki in this Grand Prix, whether there's something physical going on, whether he's in a similar position to Binder in terms of... And to be fair, off the back of signing a new VR46 contract for 2024, hasn't really been able to celebrate. Really, they will never potentially be in this kind of position again. They certainly haven't been in the past, staring at a one, two, three. They've never had a double podium, let alone a podium lockout. And that's exactly what we're looking at right now. There is still a long, long way to go. Thing, you know, because the medium... Oh, sorry, there's some... That was the other thing I was going to tell you. The wind has really got up. See people streak backwards if they haven't managed it or got bikes set up correct. Yeah, thanks very much for that, uh, Simon. He's having had to park his stricken KTM. The first thing, what a what a class guy Brad Binder is. The first thing on his mind, having had to retire. Running second before that last lap mishap last year, finished fifth. That's a brilliant, his best ever result at this circuit. One, two, and... It's looking like, in terms of the victory here in Barcelona, 
it is going to be just between Vinales and the left. Putting behind him some wretched bad luck so far this season. Augusto Fernandez has had a look at Mark Marquez a couple of times in the first corner. Three, so he's promoted already as Augusto Fernandez takes advantage of a mistake that time for Mark Marquez to move through into the top ten. Mark Olven, he then slots himself up into P6. So Alex Marquez then, his next target up ahead of him will be the... Jorge Martin. Fair play to Martin, he's found himself back in the 140s. That was not uh, the in this restart. He was briefly overtaken by Ralph Fernandez on that lap, but he's been able to get back ahead of the fourth approach. Of, of Ralph Fernandez, he's the third rider in this experience. Tech Gremlins, it's a, a race of survival. Isn't it? And out of nowhere, what was a seven tenth of a second lead is 1.3 seconds. That's a real comfortable buffer, isn't it? Now for Vinales, straight in his home Grand Prix for Ralph Fernandez. Crypto data RNF hopes resting on the shoulders of Oliveira, who's far in furnace, wouldn't it? Having qualified down in 18th, promoted up to 17th on the grid. Looks like he might well salvage that soft rear tyre, as we suspect that he would do. He can't get out of the 142s, Marquez, and his pace, you feel, will contract and a guarantee of a ride next year on the inside of the Gen Antonio. That's neat and tidy from Fernandez. But through then, gets better for the rookie, up to ninth. Yeah, we have still haven't seen as Gian Antonio fights back again on Augusto Fernandez. All about managing your rear tie now from this stage of the Grand Prix. Vinales just needs to make sure he's got more grip at the end than Alex Spargo. And how much dare Alex Spargo? The Gian Antonio, but this scrap that they're having together is costing them time because ahead of them, Alex a very rapid and speedy recovery to uh, Pekka Banyaya. Mona Chipi will not for us. Yeah, only that we're in exactly the point of the race where I expect some riders to run into trouble and I'm down to eight and a half tenths. We're back here with number 72, Mini VR 46, rider Betseki, the best of Marini's Grand Prix so far. And that's why he is potentially just about to take that 11th place away. Fernandez, and he's currently running in. But Maverick Banyales is coming under big pressure. The delicious Bargo will go wide there in the back of the pit. Charles, just taking a went two seconds back of the race lead, but comfortably clear. Martin just got to manage this. If he doesn't make any mistakes, the big pressure as well from Gian Zarco, who's keeping himself in the 141s. So Oliveira already been picked off by one premium. Need some up his sleeve because Alicia Spargo is closing in. That is the battle for the lead between the two factory employees. It is now just over. Hard that soft front tyre must be crying enough. Looks like Vinales has just got the slight upper hand in the first. And he manages to drag it to the apex somehow through turns 10 and 11. Clinging on here for a top 10 is the fighting a rear guard action for fourth place. Oliveira now firmly buried in the 142. He's lost another two tenths last time around. I mean, it's down to under three tenths of a second. This is game on. This is Alasia Spargo, who maybe has just been happy. At the disposal of those Michelin medium tyres as they come on to the start finish straight. There will be five laps to go. Vinales will now start. They come through the high speed turn three. That's where you really are abusing and stressing the right hand side of your rear tyre. And the Lazarco and Oliveira, isn't it? The battle that's raging for fourth place. Maverick Vinales couldn't get the better of a stop. 55 kilometers an hour. This is where he passed Bagnaia yesterday to win the sprint. And he's on the inside Ooh. of Maverick Vinales. As he could. The problem Vinales has got now is, of course, he wants to try and get back on terms with his teammate, Alicia Spargo. Spargo just made it fit, didn't he? There was room. He had the inside line. But as Lewis said, Maverick Vinales was just like, well, if you want it, hit off that front tire. It was mangled, wasn't it? Yeah. He's not going to be able to have anything in response for a later Spargo. Yeah, the gap is over one second. Laps, not two, away from a, well, a momentous victory for him and finally banishing the ghost of one year ago. You can just imagine. Revenge will be sweet. Redemption is coming for a later Spargo of his Grand Prix career without any question. Alicia Spargo's first World Championship podium was here 12 years ago, back an historic 1-2 for the first time in their Mother GP history. Does not get any better than that. Two or three years ago, he thought about quitting. He thought he'd run into a brick wall of Prilly not making any significant strides. Like a Prilly 1-2 as well. Alasia Spargo wins his home Grand Prix by just in the full tenth of Mendes and the Gian Antonio in tenth. There was some really good... Kedua pebalap Gresini Racing belum berhasil meraih podium pada MotoGP Catalunya 2023. Meski demikian, Alex Marquez dan Fabio Di Gian Antonio tetap menargetkan poin besar pada seri ke-11 MotoGP 2023 ini. Alex yang start dari posisi ketujuh mengalami kesulitan saat balapan. 
Dia pun memutuskan untuk bermain aman dan membawa motor melewati garis finish di posisi ke-10. Selalu ada rombongan pebalap yang berkumpul dalam sprint race. Hari ini saya langsung kehilangan pemimpin dan kami tidak memiliki kecepatan untuk mengurangi jarak dalam balapan yang begitu singkat, ujar Alex, dalam keterangan resminya. Untuk main race yang digelar Minggu, 3 September 2023, Alex akan tetap memenuhi rekomendasi mekanik untuk meningkatkan performa dari Ducati Desmosedici P22. Kami perlu meningkatkan sesuatu terutama di bagian depan motor agar benar-benar kompetitif besok dan makin nyaman saat balapan, tapi kami berada dalam arah yang baik. Performa kali ini lebih baik dibandingkan hari Jumat, kata Alex. Sementara rekan setimnya yang akrab di Sapa di Gia, memiliki hasil kualifikasi yang cukup baik dengan start dari 10 besar, tepatnya dari posisi ke-8. Sayangnya, Digia tidak bisa bertahan dan finish di posisi ke-13. Tidak diragukan lagi, kami melakukan balapan dengan baik. Sayang sekali hal itu terjadi bersamaan dengan 5 lap tersisa karena kami seharusnya bisa mengejar ketertinggalan dari Enea Bastianini dan Johan Zarko memungkinkan bersaing mendapatkan poin, ujarnya. Digi menambahkan, dirinya memiliki laju motor yang baik dan itu menjadi pertanda baik untuk balapan nanti. Dia pun menargetkan bisa finish dan meraih poin besar. Pada klasemen sementara MotoGP 2023, Alex kini berada di peringkat ke-10 dengan 92 poin. Sedangkan Digia, berada di peringkat ke-16 dengan 37 poin. Poin besar yang diraih nanti akan memberikan energi positif bagi tim yang didukung Federal Oil ini.